this game literally is legendary. Um, you know, a lot of good reviews. I've heard a lot of people saying how much they like this game. So I've been meaning to check it out uh, for quite a while now. Recently picked up a copy for the TurboGrafx-16. So let's uh, turn this thing on and check it out. Alright, so game starts off here. It's a basic platformer, similar to games like Rastin at the time, except with much better graphics. These graphics are gorgeous. I mean, for 1988, that's when this game came out in Japan on the PC Engine, uh, developed by Victor Interactive Software, and then uh, released in North America for the launch of the TurboGrafx-16 in 1989. Either way, for this, for the time, this game looks great, it sounds great, the controls are good. I think the level design is really cool. I mean, even right here, coming underground and fighting this spider, you don't have to come down here. You may end up falling down here, or you can choose to come down here. Um, but you will want to come down here, because when you beat this spider, get one of your first main power-ups. As we can see here, that's our strength. The very big bar at the top of the screen that's now about one quarter full, that's our strength. And as you can see, as we swing our axe, the strength goes down. So if you continually swing the axe, you can hit the guys faster you won't be hitting them as hard. And I think that's really cool the way they did that. The enemies are pretty cool. The storyline is actually pretty good for a game of this era, especially on the TurboGrafx-16. Remember a lot of these games like Keith Courage, the storyline was pretty pathetic. And speaking of Keith Courage, this is the game that a lot of TurboGrafx-16 fans feel should have came with the TurboGrafx-16. Here's our first main boss fight, two grizzly bears. Alright, so we get full health at the end of each level. We're on to level two. We keep our power up, our one of four strength power ups. You also get speed power ups in this game, which will allow you to swing even faster without any delay between swinging. And here's our second power up. Now we can see our power bar is half full. We do a lot more damage to enemies, but only if you let it build up. As you can see, every time you swing, it drops back down to zero again. And, you know, it takes a second before it actually gets back up to half full. Uh, hit points are shown below in the bottom uh, left, just below the power bar. Um, to the right of that, right in the middle of the screen, it shows uh, four black slots. And you can see we have two sort of red uh, rubies or jewels in there. That's your power-ups, once again, for your strength. So it's also shown there as well as on the bar. And here we have our second boss coming up. It sort of comes in two stages. There's this first boulder that comes here, and uh, you, you, you've got to destroy it. And then another boulder comes, and this is basically the boss here, which is kind of a cool idea for a boss. I mean, it's just a big rock. But uh, they pulled it off. It works well. And there we go. Beat the second level. I mean, once again, I gotta give props to this game. The graphics are amazing for the time. And, uh, you know, this is a game I had owned a TurboGrafx-16 back in the day, and I had Legendary Axe 2. I'd actually played Legendary Axe 2 back in the day. Still have it now. I've reviewed it, but I had never played the original. I'd never played Legendary Axe, and a lot of guys 
um, like Star Soldier 1, were saying that Legendary Axe was actually better than the second one. They were, they were disappointed in the second one. Now, I grew up with the second one first, so I liked the second one, but having played this one now, I know exactly what they're talking about. This is so much better of a game than Legendary Axe 2. They're very different. The art style's different, the level design's different, but, you know, I think the enemies are a little bit smarter in this one, the way they counterattack. I like the way that you soup up your character. You soup up your character in the second one, too, but you also get different weapons in the second one. And it was funny because, uh, Star Soldier 1 would always complain that, uh, you get the axe in the second one and the axe sucked. It's like you never wanted to get the axe, you wanted the sword. In this one, you only have the axe, but of course, as you soup up your power, you know, the axe is basically more powerful. The game isn't too difficult in terms of dying from enemies. You have a lot of hit points, you can take a lot of damage. The problem is falling. Falling kills you more often than, you know, actually dying from an enemy. I didn't realize how well this game did back in the day. In 1989, Electronic Gaming Monthly actually gave this Game of the Year. Not Game of the Year for TurboGrafx-16. This was Electronic Gaming Monthly's Game of the Year for 1989. It, you know, won a lot of other awards. Um, it won TurboGrafx-16 Game of the Year. Um, it won uh, Video Game and Computer Entertainment, also gave it Game of the Year in 1989. Um, so this was actually, uh, you know, when the TurboGrafx-16 came out, this was really, this was really the one game to buy for. And, uh, you know, that's why people think that it should have came with the system. But, um, you know, NEC didn't publish this game, or they didn't develop this game, rather, so... Developers didn't want that. I don't know. They make more money, I'm sure, selling the game separately than packing it in with the system, right? You know, I think if more people had have known about this game in 1989, I mean, the launch of the TurboGrafx-16 wasn't exactly a big deal back then, and uh, the TurboGrafx-16 was actually pretty expensive at launch, so the fact of the matter is a small minority that had the TurboGrafx-16 in 1989. A very small minority. I mean, most of us were lucky to have our NES. Most of us were playing NES. And, uh, you know, this game, I don't think, really got the attention it deserved. I mean, it really could have saved the TurboGrafx-16 if more games like this had have come out for it. You know, maybe they could have brought it out uh, the same year they did in Japan, brought this out in 88. I don't know, there's so many things they could have done differently. Um, but, you know, either way, this game is awesome. This game definitely, in my opinion, is better than the second one. I still like the second one, but look at the level design, look at the backgrounds. I mean, in the second one, everything was so square. Like, you're always in buildings, and it was just... Everything was square, and here it's all more realistic level design. Anyways, awesome game. Like I said, falling usually is what kills you in this game, and it gets pretty difficult, but definitely pick this one up if you have a TurboGrafx-16.